Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we uh, greet you that are with us live stream and uh, our dear, dear, dear sister, Dodie Stockwell, we uh, greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Jerry, we're glad you're with us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody else I missed, God bless you. We thank you for being with us. And don't forget, you can join us also. Uh, on giving by going to our website, wellspringministries.tv, and uh, just go ahead and uh, there's a donation button there. So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Sean and I are going to be talking together again tonight. Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'll let you find where we're going to start. There we are. Page right two. there, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Glory to God. We've had a good time today. Yes, we? we have. We had a new member join down at the Arrival Center and also had, what, two, two people? Two rededications. Uh, rededicate their lives to yep. the Lord. And another lady uh, we prayed for. Yeah. yeah so this is good. It was good. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. We might as well have a good time. Might as well. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Hallelujah. So uh, we kind of left off this morning with Joshua. Uh -huh. And uh, God gave Joshua some commandments, some instructions, would you say. And he says, only you be strong and very courageous, that you may do all that the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you, and then he goes on in verse 8, The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you will meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and you shall deal wisely and have good success. So we're thinking here uh, that until faith moves your mouth, there is an indifference to the word that has slipped into your life. Right, so. We talked this morning about indifference in our approach to the word. And uh, so in, in, if faith isn't moving your mouth, then you have become indifferent to the word of God. Yeah, faith, faith is an action word. Right. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to speak. That's the action. You speak the word. Faith speaks. Faith always speaks. It always speaks. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. It speaks what the Word says. Yeah. So uh, he was telling Joshua, meditate in the instructions that I gave you. Pay attention so you observe to do them and prosper with good success. And so uh, those who do that will prosper and succeed. So well, that's, that's the secret of prosperity and, and success is speaking the word of God. You've yep. got First, you've got to hide it in your heart, of course, so you can't be indifferent to it. You have to hide it in your heart. And, to agree uh, with it. Yeah, 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 because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right. So you've, you've got to have that word in your mouth, no matter what the situation, what you feel like saying, and uh, what you should say are two different things. <laughs> and usually what you do say is not, what you should be saying. No, it usually tears up, tears tears up, up whatever everything. seed you had in the ground. Right, It'll yeah. tear it right up. Yeah. That's right. And you say, God cares for me. I'm on his side. If I'm on his side, I will prosper and be in good health as my soul prospers. That's right. So soul prosperity comes from the word of God. Now, believing uh, is not the same as faith. They might work together. But this is a point to consider. Believing is a persuasion. Until it persuades me, until I believe, until I'm persuaded and motivated, then uh, I'll become a doer. But until I'm persuaded, there's a scripture that says fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. Fully persuaded, motivated, then I will become a doer. But until that time, I can say I believe. That's just like saying I know, like we talked earlier. But uh, it won't have any effect on my life. Now, that's something, isn't it? That's true. Mm -hmm. I right. can say, well, I believe in Jesus. And a lot of people do. So I believe in Jesus. I love Jesus. I believe in Jesus. 
And uh, yet Jesus said, if you really love me, you'd keep my commandments. And so there's, there's the, the, the it ha you have to go past believing in Jesus to, to be having the faith of Jesus and speaking the word, amen, and um, doing what he says. His faith without works is dead. Believing opens your mouth. It does every time. Believing should open your mouth. And you can watch it in the natural because whatever you believe is what you're talking about. That's what you're going to say. If you believe the political climate is not good, that's all you're talking about. If you believe the weather's it's going to rain, that's all we're talking about. Oh, it's so humid. It's all we're talking about, right? We talk about those we, things. What we believe. <laughs> what we believe. Okay. So we need to start believing and being fully persuaded in the word so that when we speak, it will have an effect on our life. Because uh, what did um, uh, the Bible says, if we, it's the same as if God spoke when we speak his word. Because his word has power in it. It has an inherent power in it. It's, it's living and powerful. But what we, what we have a tendency to do is uh, speak false news, fake news. We, we speak, think? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we speak what we feel. Mm -hmm. We speak what we perceive right. around us, you know. That's all basically, it may be true, but you have to remember that true is not the truth. The truth is immutable and unchangeable. What's true is changeable. And so what you're looking at, what you're feeling, those kind of things, those will change. They can change, will change especially when you put the word in your mouth, the truth, and you speak the truth in love, hallelujah, and then what happens is the truth supersedes all these other so-called truths. Exactly. It's actually you're speaking with your reality as you see it. God's reality For you, that's becomes the truth. your reality. But that truth is, like you said, different than God's truth, right. which he says in his word is his truth. He is the truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Well, you can he feel, came to lead us into all truth. Yeah, you can feel sick. You can feel weak. You can feel uh, feeble, right? And yet the joy of the Lord is our strength. And by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. Not we will be, but we were. And, and, and so we that, were, we that are. is the immutable truth. Right. And so we've, just, we've, got, to, uh, we've got to bring that into focus what the Word of God says about our situation, our circumstance, and then just, uh, that's the good fight of faith. It happens right between our ears. I think that's a lot to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Light comes against darkness. Always you, dispels you, darkness. You turn too. on the light, the darkness flees. The truth will set you free. The truth comes against your reality, whatever it is, and it will change it totally. But we need to speak uh, his word. We need to speak his word. We need to speak our expectation. We don't need to speak our current possession. Is that denying what's going on? No, not at all. It's just that we have a greater hope. We have a greater expectation. Why would God give healing. Just think about this. The human body has the ability to heal itself in some areas. If you cut yourself and you put a band-aid on it, it will eventually heal itself. That's the normal thing, right? The body has immunity. It fights off disease. The body can has um, properties that will help to heal it. And so if this is the way God made us, why would he not then provide us with supernatural healing also? Because he's a healing God, isn't he? He's a healing Jesus. Yeah, we can't just be subject to the natural because right. we've been translated out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're new creatures in Christ. Now We're supernatural people. We're not natural people anymore. And we have the authority of the name of Jesus. Right. Right? And and the blood, of course, is our is our legal that's that's our legal plea for whatever whatever situation we're in. So we have the name, we have the blood, and we have the word. Amen. 
And when we speak the word with the authority we know we have, because we're in Christ. Right. That's something we've, we've just got to understand. I'm, I'm in Christ. It's not I that live anymore. I'm living in him, and he's living in me. Hallelujah. And so I need to learn how to talk like him, walk like him. Amen. Can't Amen. be indifferent, right? Amen. Amen. I don't think that, the, that God is indifferent to what's going on in this world. Well, God said every promise is yes and amen. In Christ Jesus. He cannot lie. He can't. It's against his nature. So whatever he said in his word has to be true. And it's the, high, it's the highest truth that there is. It's immutable. It's unchangeable. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we need to learn to speak it to the point to where we not only believe it, but we have, uh, what was the word you used? Um, we, we have received it and accepted it and made it, a, made it who we are. It, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And then it goes on, if we go to Proverbs 4.20, 4.22, it says, the words are life to those who find them, mm -hmm. healing and health to all their flesh. All right, so uh, starting with verse 20, my son, attend to my words, consent and sub submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. Mm -hmm. For they are life. What's life? The words are life to those who find them. Healing and health to all their flesh. I tell you, the word is the answer to everything. Amen. Keep and guard your heart. Verse 23, with all vigilance, and above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. So everything that we have need of comes to us through the word, and as we are fully persuaded that God means it, and I, I'm not saying that I have this 100% of the time. I'm just saying I'm working on this now. I've got a got some projects here. I'm working on this. <laughs> How many has projects? We've you know, got some projects. We're working on this. So it's not like teaching this just to, to other people. When you teach it, you teach it to yourself. You better, and, better teach it to yourself first. Yeah. You? And, and oh, so God. you got to get this going so you're moving in a different realm. Yeah. You, you keep and guard your heart by only putting in it uh, what God says to put in it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In other words, I might not be separated from you and all, all that you are and all that you provide. And that's something we need to be diligent about uh, with all vi vigilance. And, and so we need to watch it. We need to watch what we're saying because we can drive, when we repeat things enough times, we're putting that in our heart. And then that's what's going to come out, whether it's fear, uh, whether it's uh, insecurity, whether it's shame, whether it's uh, uh, poverty mentality, whatever it is. When we talk it, we, 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 we start hiding it in our heart, and then we be, that's what we become. And we need to understand that the Word of God is the absolute authority. And if we will agree with God and hide His Word in our heart, then we will have whatsoever we say. Amen. Mark 11, 23, 24. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have what you say. Right? Right? And so... Uh, if you're going to have what you say, if you speak doubt and unbelief, what are you going to get? Well, you have doubt and unbelief. Yeah. You're going to get doubt and unbelief. Doubt cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing you talk. Well, sure. Yeah. Fear, fear is the same way. I'm afraid of so-and-so. I'm afraid of flying. I'm afraid right. of this. I'm afraid of that. And that, that just beckons to a spirit of fear to come in and reinforce what you've been speaking with your mouth. We speak and it. sowing into your heart. We hear it. We see it. And it goes into our heart. And we contaminate ourselves. Yeah. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I have power, I have love, and I have a sound mind. Hallelujah. And there's no fear here because perfect love, which is God, God is perfect love, 
casa. And, and he's in me, and I'm in him by, by virtue of what Jesus Christ has done for me, the shed blood, uh, shed blood of Jesus. Then, uh, you know, if love, perfect love is in me, then perfect love casts out all fear. I've got nothing to fear but fear itself, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> so <laughs> we, just, we just say, well, what does the word say? Right? I am weak, but he is strong. Amen? And so we don't look at maybe our, our inabilities because we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. So the anointed one and his anointing uh, develop us to the place to where we can literally do all things. But we've got to be speaking what God's word says to get what God's word says we should get. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you can't you can't tear it up by um, just being double-minded because a double-minded man can expect to receive nothing of God. And so if we're we're believing God, speaking the word of God one time, and then we're spe not we're speaking something else another time, we're double-minded, and then we're likened to a spring of water that has both bitter and sweet, and that that just you know that's not supposed to happen. Because a clear spring from the wellspring, which is Jesus, should be pure living water and uh, should have no pollutants in it at all. Right. And so that's what we do is we pollute the stream of our life with our words if we're not careful. Or we can just let the pure water of, of uh, the word of God wash us, cleanse us, and uh, purify us. Praise God. And our flesh keeps us from full agreement with the word. Our flesh can be our biggest enemy. The spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. <laughs> so the word has to dominate our flesh. The word has to dominate our flesh. And so uh, when we look at the works of the flesh, then we would recognize that those things are keeping us from full agreement with the word of God. If we really believed God's word was true, we would not have works of the flesh. Say, well, you're always going to have works of the flesh. When you don't have to let it work. You're only going to have you're going to have the flesh until you either get a glorified body, or uh, to be absent from that body is to be present with the Lord. But uh, you don't have to give flesh its due justice and and it's equal opportunity in your life. You don't have to let it take over, <laughs> even though it wants to sometimes. Oh, that's the truth. Yeah. What are you in Galatians? Mm -hmm. uh, so these things then would destroy our faith. Where are they? Yeah, the, the works of the flesh, the practices of the flesh are clear, they're obvious, they're immorality, impurity, indecency, and this can be in the way we talk, too. Idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, uh, selfishness, divisions, party spirit, you know, factions, that kind of thing, with uh, peculiar opinions and heresies, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like, and the like. So it just kind of all of those things, and so we, we can be talk, talking, uh, you know, we can be talking uh, uh, any of these things and uh, just breeding them in our life, and they, they are fleshy. That's all there is to it. And it, but the scary thing is, it says, I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen. And you so think he we, means that? Huh? You think he means that? I think he means that. I think he, I think means he absolutely means that. Oh. Uh, you know, but when we yield to, to God and we begin to hide his word in our hearts and we begin to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, then the fruit of the Spirit, and it's a work, it's something that we, we participate in. We're going to make the choice to love, uh, to have joy. Joy, joy of the Lord is our strength. Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Patience. None of us likes to pray for patience, but uh, <laughs> but yet yet we're we're supposed to be patient and kind and uh, even tempered. I, I I saw what was somebody posted on Facebook. 
I have road rage when I follow people in a grocery line. I mean, this is that is that's the kind of confession that gets you into a lot of trouble. I can tell you, because we need to have a little bit of patience, amen. Even in the grocery line, uh, kindness, goodness, uh, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control. Well, self-control is just controlling yourself, right? Self-restraint, countenance. Against such things, there is no law that can bring a charge. Woo! Hallelujah. Right. For, for like Isaiah says, your righteousness is of me, says the Lord. And so we're declared righteous and we're expected to begin to live righteously and to speak righteously. Hallelujah. So we're not speaking words that are going to cause strife. Right? Or hatred, enmity. We're going to, going to be, we're speak the word of God. Hallelujah. That's the difference between reacting and responding. Yeah, thinking about what you say before you say it, not saying it in the heat of the moment. Right. Right. And being, being self-controlled. Responding is to respond with love, respond with grace and kindness. Kindness and, and, and I'm, I'm working on that, too. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Now, now, knowledge in itself, and we know that there's all kinds of knowledge being poured out right now. All, I mean, there's just so much fake knowledge and real knowledge and, and that uh, you can fill your head up till it wants to burst. The knowledge itself does not bring results anywhere in the Bible. If we know it, that doesn't bring the result. Mm -hmm. it, it's when our faith comes up to the level of what we know, then we have it. So we got to be fully persuaded of what we know, and our faith grows and rises up to meet the knowledge of what we know, not of uh, the weather, not of the how to grow plants, not of how to drive a car, the knowledge of God's word. And the knowledge, we know what it says. I know what it says, but I can't get my believer. Yeah, we, we, we can know, in our, but our faith is down yeah, here. Yeah, faith is down our here. faith is the action part. Right. When we begin to speak it and yeah. begin to do it, we've got to, faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. You want to get your faith up to where your your knowing or your believing is, and then you have that. You say to the mountain, "Move." The mountain will move. move. The mountain will move. The mountain of obstacles. The mountain of trouble. The mm -hmm. mountain of, of the manifestation things. of the healing comes. The, the, right. The finances mm -hmm. you need come. The, yes. Whatever it is. That's right. Yeah. The wisdom on how to handle a certain situation mm -hmm. comes. So, and God's, it, right. God's is higher than ours. Let's say uh, God's wisdom is higher than our wisdom. And so we talk ourselves out of what God has for us. Uh, for example, you would say, like um, you gave the example of tithing and giving. All right, God says, if, you, if you're a tither and this sort of thing, these things are going to happen. But we decide we can't do that because we don't have enough that we see that we have now. Well, it doesn't make any any sense in the natural. Right. We talk can, ourselves out of it. You can have more because yeah. all we see is having less if, we, right. if we've tied. And yet God said, my ways are higher than your ways. And if we can trust him, trust and obey, right, willingly trust and obey, then what we'll find is that our faith will get up to where our knowing is and all of a sudden, we'll begin to experience the benefits of tithing, we the benefits of giving. In supernatural economy. Yeah, yeah. Supernatural which is what we economy. want to move into. We want to move out of the natural limitations, as good as they are. We thank God for doctors and all they can provide and medicine, all that kind of thing. We thank God for good jobs and opportunities and all of that, but the whole bottom line is there's a better way, there's a higher way, there's a supernatural way, and that 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 is in being willing and obedient to the Word of God. Right. 
and then and believing it to the point to having enough faith in it to the point to where it's coming out of your mouth all the time and acting on it acting on it and when you act on it then not only you say it you act on it if you don't say it you won't act on it that's true because you've already decided you can't do it and our mind is always looking for reasons we can't do stuff <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> Bad mind, bad mind. <laughs> no, that's a, a truth. When the faith comes up to the level of your knowledge, then you're going to have what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard. And that's what God wants us to have. He wants us to be hundredfold Christians, not thirtyfold Christians, and, and not missing the whole thing altogether. So it's it's a but it's a matter of getting your faith level where you're knowing mm -hmm. we we know a lot of stuff and a lot of it we shouldn't bother knowing but we should know the word of god but not to just know it and not do anything with it not to speak it because of, of what we we read it 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 requires that we speak it don't let these words depart from your mouth keep speaking them right hallelujah and sometimes because they are you, life yeah you just have to do it and see what happens. Sometimes you just have to spring out there and do it and see what happens, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you know if somebody will get healed if you never lay hands on them? How do you know if you can prophesy if you never open your mouth to prophesy? How do you know? You don't know until you try it, right? You try it. Because, and that's faith. It's an action word. You have to do something with it and uh, move, move toward it. Mm -hmm. Now, in Hebrews 4, verses 1 and 2, it talks to us about uh, the Israelites of old and what caused them their challenge. Let's, let's read, Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, let us be afraid to distrust it, lest any of you should think he has come too late and has come short of reaching it. There is, uh, be afraid, let's be afraid to distrust the promise. Be afraid, you say, well, we're not supposed to have fear. Well, we should have some concern here if we're in distrust. We should fear, I mean, as, fear is a reverential, awesome acknowledgement that there's something working here that's bigger than we are. And so it says, for indeed, we have had the glad tidings, the gospel of God proclaimed to us just as truly as they, the Israelites of old, did when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. Now, isn't that interesting? We've had the glad tidings, and Israel had the same glad tidings. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Same glad tidings. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Right? I mean, the... the Deliverance from bondage. When the Israelites had that deliverance from bondage, from uh, from Egypt. I mean, wow, there it is. When we got saved and we got pulled out of the Egypt, the world, and we got changed, it's the same concept. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. And it says they, uh, we've had it proclaimed to us. We know about it, right? But the message they heard didn't benefit them because it wasn't mixed with faith. So the Amplified says that means the leaning of the entire personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness <coughs> by those who heard it. There has to be a mixture of faith and this knowledge. Faith and knowledge mixed together. Those neither were they united in faith with Joshua and Caleb, who heard it and did believe. So there we have another thing of what are you hearing and what are you choosing to go with? Because we hear a lot of things. So there's all kinds of bad news out there to be heard. Well, and and the the they or the um, what is it? The majority are not always right. Right, Joshua and Caleb were were really they they were surrounded with unbelief, 
and people talking mm -hmm. about what could not happen. And yet, because the two of them clung to what God had said, the promises God had made, eventually got to go into the promised land, possess the possession that was promised to them. He said, well, yeah, but he had to wait 40 years. So, huh? You're, you, the thing is that if, you, if you'll hold on to your faith, and, and what it, they, he, Caleb kept speaking it, kept speaking it, I'm sure reciting it, because he was able to quote what God had told him once he was, once he was in the promised land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is, this is what God promised me, and now I want it. And even though I'm 80 now, and that was 40 years ago, I'm well able to take it. Uh -huh. well, I don't know if he—I don't know if he really was physically or not, but he believed God would make him able to go ahead and possess what he'd been promised, and and that's the kind of that's the kind of faith we need to have. That we are we we now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and so we have, we just claim them as being in the now, and they are in in God. And, and, but sometimes we just we've got to stay right there in that now until uh, uh, until the God suddenly comes. Hallelujah! Comes when that happens, then you're going to walk into the fullness of everything that God told you He'd bring in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean that that basically that's what I count on here. You know, I've had people, I've had preachers tell me, "Why don't you just give it up, man? You know, why don't you just give it up?" So I'm called here. What am I going to give up? I'm not going to walk off and leave the people that are here. See, I don't. I'm not here for numbers. I mean, I want to reach all the people I can, of course, but I'm just doing what God has promised me, and I expect to see everything He's promised. Amen. And every once in a while, an angel will show up and kind of assure us that uh, we're still on the right track, right? Uh, because if we weren't, they'd have packed up and left a long time ago. Amen. <laughs> but God sent them down here uh, to help us until this whole thing comes to fruition. And it will. Amen. Amen. And I'll preach in that building out there before it's all said and done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So I, I really, I, I had to, get, but I had to get over what things look like. I had to get over. Right? All of that stuff. You have to get rid of a little bit of pride and ego along the way, too. So God's working in you all the time. And you just have to embrace it. And uh, keep, the, keep the word in your mouth. Amen. The Bible says the plowman will overtake the reaper. So there's a lot of plowing going on. Yeah. But he will, over, the plowman will overtake the reaper. That's right. And they'll work it's together. It's all going to come together. It's all going to come together. Together. Hallelujah. Amen. So we've got to really fight against indifference and be earnest in effort and application of what God has said. Mm -hmm. That's part of the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. I often wonder, what is the good fight of faith? What is the good fight of faith? And there it is, right there. We have to be able to keep ourselves on focus. On, on the, the point, on, on where we're going. Well, and, and we're told to press toward the mark of the high calling of God. What is a mark? It's, 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 a, it's a place that you can measure along your journey. The mark mm -hmm. is the next place on the way to the dream and the vision being in complete fulfillment. It's a, you could say it's a short-term goal for a long-term vision. And you press toward the next mark. What it when once you know what God wants you to do, and you be you begin to speak that, huh? Because it's a word from God to you. You begin to speak that, but then you also have to start making progress toward the, what you're saying, and, and your words will give you your direction. Your words set are like a rudder, right? Isn't that isn't that what James is James mm -hmm. said? You know, that your tongue is like a ship's rudder. And your, so your words give you your direction. But you have marks that you press toward. What's the next thing we need to do? Okay, now we're here. What's the next thing we need to do? Though the vision tarry, wait for it. But you don't sit around waiting for it. You, you wait for it, moving toward the thing that God has shown you. And it's, it's, 
it can look totally impossible. You, if you could, if you could get, if certain things would come into place, you'd know what to do. But it might take a lot of money. You know, we can't build a building till we the money comes in, basically. See, well, I know what we know what to do with the building if the money come in. See, so so uh, it's it's not. That, that, but those are the things you press toward that, but you move toward them one mark at a time. And sometimes you have to press pretty hard to what God has has shown you. So it's it's one step at a time. But faith is active. And 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 you follow your words. It's, they direct you. Hallelujah. And be careful you don't step on any landmines in the middle of progressing because there will be some things that will come up that yeah. sometimes that's will. That, that's where a relationship with the Holy Spirit is so important, though. He can say, there's a pothole. You right. can avoid it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we, we learn to listen, we spend time with him. We're speaking the word of God. We're listening to the spirit of God. We're pressing toward the mark, and he'll show us the potholes, and we can get there a lot quicker. Right? Yes. Amen. We can get there quicker. I'm all for quicker. Well, you write the vision, right? Make it plain. So make it plain so that anybody that reads it can read it on the run. <laughs> well, it seems like the suddenlies of God come that way, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, we're, there's nothing to do, and then all of a sudden, everything to do. And so that's the way life is. It is, it is. Suddenly. So we just need to recognize that uh, if we persevere and we learn these things, and I'm not saying I have learned them, but I'm saying I'm working on learning them. I'm, I'm, look, I'm working on persevering. I'm working on changing some things. I'm working on uh, being in the word more. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing in the word of God. I'm, I'm moving towards that direction. Because that's what I want to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully persuaded that he'll do what he says he's going to do. And what do I base that on? 43 years. None of us ever went hungry. I'm not having any problem with hunger. No. I mean, <laughs> God, when you look back at what God has done for each of us, it's amazing. Isn't it? It is totally amazing. And sure, we may have taken some bad turns. We may have made a few mistakes, but you know what? Nothing's permanent because he's eternal. Mm. Yeah, brother, brother Don Walker used to say, well, those are the times your Holy Ghost wasn't working. <laughs> In other words, we weren't listening. <laughs> you know, because the Holy Spirit always works, right? But we have to listen to him. That's right. Having ears to hear. <laughs> yeah, to listen to him, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And so we do, and we're working on that. So I hope that's helped you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. Amen. Let's have communion. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Because too. he said, do this as often as you come together. Amen. And so we like to have communion. Amen. So we're going to do Praise it. Praise the Lord. Let's do it. Praise God. Well, thank you for joining us today at Wellspring Church of All Nations, 4870 Janelle Drive, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Pastor George Stover. I pray that you'll come and visit us. Uh, we're a Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled, tongue-talking, not ashamed of it congregation right here in the northwest part of Las Vegas. So come on out and uh, let God minister to you. Uh, we'll really be glad if you do. And let's face it, you need us and we need you. We need you and you need us. And so we pray that you'll come and be a part of uh, this wonderful growing congregation. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful day.